Good evening. I'm Steve Davidson, NA1T. I am the emergency coordinator for Hillsborough County Areas, New Hampshire. This is Steve, WA1EYF. He is one of my assistants. Together we wrote this presentation. Uh, it's only 14 slides, so it's not going to take that long anyway. Uh, most of it's a demo. And we're just going to talk about things in general, and then we'll get into some really specifics. First off, how many people use power poles? Ooh, I like that. <laughs> okay, so the name of this presentation is The Power of Power Poles. It is a Steve Squared production. Oh, this is going to be hard to do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I don't... Whoa, it doesn't go the other way. All right. So, the technology is an easy way to interconnect power. Um, it's a standard for interchangeability because red always goes to red, black always goes to black. By the way, yellow always goes to yellow, green always goes to green, white always goes to white etc 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 there are solid connections they click when you go in place and usually pull apart so one of the downsides to this technology is sometimes they oxidize anybody run into that all right. Well, you will. Trust me. I know this for a fact. Well, we have a tendency to leave them connected. All right. And the way to fix the oxidation is to pull them apart a few times because they're self-cleaning. Mm -hmm. Voltage drops. <laughs> right? <laughs> In the middle of an event. <laughs> when you're doing digital, specifically. <laughs> At least twice. <laughs> okay. Um, they do come in different sizes. Uh, you're typically probably using the small ones like this, uh, like that. So these accommodate 15 amp circuits, 30 amp circuits, and 45 amp circuits. Does anybody know what the actual pin current max is? Even those involved? It? Huh? It's 55 amps for these pins, regardless if it's 50. Yes, whether it's 15, 30, or 45. It's 50, it's, they're rated for 55 amps. Okay, when you want something a little bit more stout, you go with the big boys. One of those. Whoops. Sorry about that. That was his phone. It was past tense. Um, and here's what the fused technology looks like for the 75 amp power poles. We'll get to that in a moment. Thank you. Whoops. Most important for us, for the two of us and those who work with us, is it's the airy standard. So if I have a failure, let's see what would fail here, <laughs> pretty much anything. Um, this is a distribution panel. If this panel failed, I could literally unplug it, plug somebody else's in, and I'm back in business. All right, again, red is red, black is black. Okay. Oh, they will meet all the time, and you hope that. We'll get into that, too. Um, I don't have the picture here, but... In the past, power connectors were a variety of, what would we call that? <laughs> a variety of mongrel critters, right? Whether they're two pins, four pins, rounds, uh, rectangular, boxed, you know, whatever. What a mess, okay? The further you go back, the more bizarre they will probably be, right? This standardizes everything. However... This is the 12 volt standard. Very important. 
This is the 12 volt standard. Very important. The only difference is the current capabilities. Different sizes, different colors. For example, here's one that's yellow and black. All right, we'll get to that in a moment. There are more than 10 colors. The most common are black, brown, red, orange, yellow, blue, violet, gray, white. There's a green in there too, and a couple of others. Why? Mm, how about that? Okay. So guess what? <laughs> we tend to make use of that. Um, with the notable exception of this one, but that's all right. We'll talk about it. So, in this particular case, this is a 12 volt in and a 24 volt out. This is used for the um, the mesh hardware that we use for 5 gigs and 2.4 gigahertz, which are the what is the name of the game? switch, the routers. Can't even think of the router name. It doesn't matter. Uh, we run five gigahertz mesh antennas in Aries, as well as in the Merrimack Valley Amateur Radio Association. Anyway, and they've decided to use yellow and black. Yellow is the 24 foot lead, 24 volt lead, and black is the common. All right. Oh no! How about that? <laughs> no, the U.S. does their thing. The international community does their thing. If you own anything that's made out of in Europe or Canada, like my, my camper, <laughs> brown is your friend. <laughs> um, yeah, but they use a bunch of different colors. Uh, but so what I did here was to put a yellow connector on the yellow wire and a black connector on the black wire. So I know when I connect something to this, it better be yellow and black on the other side. Do I care what the, the color of the wire is I use? I don't. All right? So when you look at... Here's just a cable with connectors on it that I put together way back when. This happens to be red and black. It's nothing more than zip cord. Lamp cord, right? How do you know which one is common and which one is power? And that's one way, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's usually the common side. Right, right. Uh, so on one side will be smooth, and the other side will there'll be ribs. Right? Typically, not always. Typically, the rib side is the common or ground. All right? So, I mean, you'll see, very often, you'll see brown zip cord. Or maybe you'll actually be lucky enough to have a uh, zip cord that's got the clear jacket on it, but the wires are a different color. But if they don't, just be consistent. Do you care if you use the, the rib side for ground? No, just as long as it's common at both ends, okay? Probably common was a bad word to choose at that point. So we talked briefly already about the fact that there's a 15 amp, a 30 amp, and a 45 amp. Okay, for something like this, this handheld, if I'm going to charge it, I'm going to use a 15 amp. There's no reason to use a 45 amp. Will it work? Absolutely. Kind of a waste. There are some other issues with that. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is a go box. This is one of my go boxes. This one has a power supply that has power poles in the front. That's kind of handy. What if you don't have power poles on your power supply? You add them. Here's a power supply, no power poles, but it has ring connectors on the back. You need that box, paper box. The paper box. The paper right there. That one. Yeah, right? So this is just... It's 
<laughs> John, they're, it's opaque. They're trying to see through that bottle. There you go. Okay. So on the back, I don't. There are no power poles on that power mm -hmm. supply. So I've converted it. I've converted it, and I have fused it. Why? You always, always, always want to protect your power source. This one happens to have a fuse, but I'm going to use the. Uh, it's got a, actually a circuit breaker, but. You always protect your power source. Okay. There's a set of fuses that are on this, right? There are actually two fuses, one on each side. Think of your 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 wiring a radio in your car. You don't fuse just one side. You fuse both sides. Okay. You want to protect it, right? I want to protect that power supply. That power supply is self-protecting, but that's just an example. Here's a battery. This is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. It'll deliver 200 amps for about 30 seconds. Trust me, you want it fused. Okay? These are these kick ass fuses. The fuses are designed to accommodate the power source. These are 40s each. In this particular case, I'm not going to run anything more than 40 amps, right? This is going to last for a while. This particular battery, uh, we use at field day, and it powers two 7300s and a host of other things. All right. Uh, in fact, it powers the laptops, and we'll get into that shortly, among other things. I mean, there's another version here. This is also lithium iron phosphate. Right now, it's powering my laptop. This is a 12 volt, 20 amp hour, and I've got a power pole distribution on it. All right, coming out of the battery is actually one of these. This is a bioeno. These are 12 volt, 20 amp hours. So they have power poles on one side, and they've got the coaxial connector on the other for charging. Okay, I don't even bother with that. I charge this, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this is what's actually inside here. So I have, if I want to, I didn't. Whoops, keep losing parts. All right. So I, I can plug this into this. This is a uh, this is a rig runner 4005. What that means is it's 40 amps in, five loads. Don't exceed 40 amps because you're going to blow that fuse. All right. This has got, wow, two 25s, looks like a 10, a 5, and a 1. All right. I mean, whatever combination you want, just don't exceed the 40. Okay? So this will power quite a bit. This will power quite a bit more. So here's an example of an AGM. It weighs a freaking ton. <laughs> it's 12 volts. This is 20 amps, and it weighs three times what that thing weighs. Right? You take it below 50%, you're bye-bye. Okay? However, ring terminals, fuse, power poles. Same thing. If, for example, this dies a horrible death, plug this in. These die a horrible death, plug this in. A little bit difficult with that connector, but we'll get there. All right? The beauty of the system is you can plug and play to meet your requirements. That's the whole process. Okay, so I had a question earlier about the orientation, so let's deal with that. Sure. These are blade. Well, and I wouldn't because I, uh, apparently with Kenwood radios and those big, these things, on a TS-2000, anything that has a large current load, these things start to loosen up, the springs loosen up, and all of a sudden, what the hell am I having my radio? <laughs> it's not working. You look at the fuse, you measure the fuse, the fuse is fine. It's not working. It's a stand spring. Sometimes I see just a bad Yes. Good question. I don't have that answer. Um, all of the recommendations in every manual you will see says fuse both sides. They're not kidding. Yes. 
So the question becomes, is your radio grounded to the chassis? Mine is not. Yeah, no, the, 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 the right. question is, what was your last installation in 8-track player? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you did that, actually, they probably used an OEMT, <laughs> which would have handled that quite nicely. Wow. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly the reason. Okay. You know, if, if, if the chassis of the radio is grounded, which it's not. Right. Right. I mean, there's so much plastic in the cars today. It's right. tough to find metal. I deliberately do not ground my radios. Um, that's just personal choice. I'll ground my antennas, but not the radios. Okay, so we do use the technology in most of our go boxes because if I have a failure point in there, I need to be able to switch in somebody else's part. Or maybe I'm going to donate my parts, as it were, to their radios, and to their rigs, and to their go boxes. It makes it very, very quick. It's simply a matter of unplug, move, plug. It's that quick. Um, in this particular scenario, this beast with that battery is 42 pounds? No, this one's like 35 pounds. With this, it's a whole lot lighter because it's a lithium. So, and as Steve carried it earlier, it weighs a freaking ton. <laughs> you know, haul these things along, it hurts. Okay. Everything I have here, is that true? Is that true? Yes, everything I have here is Anderson Power Pulse. There are others out there, and the mileage may vary, about how good they are. The shells could be less than sufficient. The pins, the inserts could be less than sufficient. I prefer to spend a little extra money and buy the product I know just works. I've never had a problem with it other than them oxidizing, but they tell you that. They also tell you, don't solder. How many solder? Okay. You know why they tell you not to solder? It becomes brittle. Solder is brittle. Under load, when you keep moving these things, they're brittle and they break. All right? They tell you not to. Anderson says don't do it. I mean, you can. It's your call, but they do not suggest it. Uh, and we don't. We have the tools to make that happen. Okay, let's go to the next piece. Uh, they're available at PowerWorks. Most of this that I have is PowerWorks. And you can either get it directly from PowerWorks, or you can buy it from West Mountain. I have some West Mountain gear here. We'll talk about that. Uh, HRO, of course. Uh, you can even get them on Amazon. Be careful. Make sure it's Anderson power pulse because you have no idea what you're getting if it just says power pulse. What's that? Oh yeah. Mostly out of China. Oh yeah, they're all crap. If it doesn't say Anderson with the registered trademark, it's not. If they're cheap if they're cheaper than the other ones, yeah, that that too. <laughs> they're not Super expensive. They're annoying sometimes, but not super expensive. DX Engineering is also a great source. Okay, most of my stuff, mm, yeah, most of my stuff came from HRO for obvious reasons. Um, is it Anderson? Okay. No. I can't by looking at it. I can tell usually by plugging it in, right? Because the Anderson, it click. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they do pull apart when you want them to. But yes. Yes, they don't fall apart. That's right, because they're not so loose. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, this is a power pole kit from PowerWorks. Among other things, among the various different connectors it's got, it's also got two things that... There's one. What's the other one? Oh, there they are. So... When you're building these connectors, they sometimes have a habit of coming apart, coming loose. I've got a couple of options here. There's a little pin you can put in there, and it makes it secure. That's nice to a point. However, when you want to connect two of these guys together to form like an extension cable, there's this little clip. And they go into the holes that you just used the pin. So you either use the pin or you use these. Now, you can get around that because they do make a welded set. You can weld it yourself by using the PVC cement. Yeah. Or any other right. Right. These are expensive, and they don't always hold together. Are they worth it? Not really, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. But when you're desperate and you don't have that, a small package of these could go a long way. Okay? Now, the tools. Thank you. This is the tri-crimp. It's got the 15, the 30, and the 45 amp. Right? Spend the money. <laughs> yeah, just spend the money. Don't try to do it with pliers. You can. I got pretty good at it after a while. After a while. All right. These are like, I don't know what they are, $40, $42, whatever it is today. This is Tricrimp. This is from West Mountain. Or actually, this is from Power Wars. Well, no, this is a lot more than the whole kit. Yeah, yeah. So, you, I mean, I bought this bag for $100, all right? And it comes with this. And it comes with... This tray of parts, and I've added considerably to it. Um, but it's got the red, the black, the three different inserts, um, the clips. Uh, actually, it has some of the welded ones. Yeah. Oh, and it comes with this little wonderful tool. This is the removal and insert tool. Did anybody actually use one of these? All right. So... I don't use it for removal because I'm good enough now that I don't have to do that. However, is it coming up? Nice. Well, we can get to that. We're almost done with this. Okay, so let's pull that apart, make it usable again. All right. So this is a very thin wire extremely thin. When you go to put power poles on a thin wire, they have a tendency to bend back. Okay? So what do you do? You can jobble it, but you still have the problem of pushing the damn pin in. <laughs> yes, you do, by the way. All right. So this is an insert and a removal tool. You put it around it, you push the thin wire in, and it clicks. Well, the beauty of this is it's actually uh, shaped like this. It's a U. So it goes around the connector, and you just push it. All right? And if you push it far enough and then turn it, you can actually remove them. I'm not as good about that as I used to be because I haven't had to be because uh, I actually figured out you don't solder. Uh, um I actually have two of them now, a yellow and a red. Uh, who knows? All right. So when you've got the real thin wire, this or a pair of pliers, this actually works a little better because it actually gets inside the connector. You need a needle nose, almost like a jeweler's plier to get inside there. These come with the kits. And I, I think they're, what, $10? Maybe $10. I don't even know. But I bought it with the kit. So... That uh, makes it much easier for me, and I don't worry about it. Okay, what else we got? Oh, yes, where's the blue one? There's a blue one in there. Wrong one. 
this one. So, when you get to these bad boys, this won't do it. <laughs> this goes as big as 45 amps. So, yes, they are. You can put different dies in here. I don't. I don't want to screw things up. It works. Okay. I've got another one I can screw up, <laughs> but not that one. So here's one that's for 75. Uh, 50 and 75? This is 50 and 75. It's blue. That's all you need to know. All right. It is. Blue's a great color. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. And they're both ratcheted. Oh, and about the ratchet. So if you're going to go do this and crimp on one of these connectors, sometimes they suck, right? Because they're so hard to push. So do this instead. Uh, let's do it here. Push down on the table. Let the table do the work. Think smarter, not harder. Okay, so I do have one where I could really screw things up. This has the interchangeable dies too, and this is for coax and a bunch of other things, as well as this stuff. Right? If I'm going to screw one up, this is the one I'm going to screw up. Okay. Some other things that I do, some tricks of the trade. Heat shrink. Wonderful concept. And of course, something to heat heat the shrink tube. I don't know if you can cover this. Uh, when you were talking about the thin wire, mm -hmm. I thought you, well, one of the challenges right now is getting the little thin wire. Okay. This comes out a lot right. So, the right. So, no, no, no. Take the wire, make it twice as long. Fold it over, crimp it. Okay? Ah, that's a good piece of information to talk about, too. Okay, so when you take the insulation off the wire, most of you probably use diagonal cutters, right? No? Good. All right, so here's one. Here's the, this one's a Klein. All right? And they're not that much money. They're like 30 bucks, okay? But it saves so much grief, aggravation, and a whole no vocabulary, right? <laughs> so. Oh, no, I was a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> so I use this. Now, here's the catch with some of these, especially the 30 amp. Most of you will have a tendency to wind the, the, uh, the wire, right? You'll try to tighten it up. Don't do that. Because you actually make it bigger. I like that. Because <laughs> you can't get it perfect. Don't, don't even try. Just make it straight, and it slides right in. And if you're really desperate, use the 45 and call it a day. Because the 45 is you, and you crimp the whole thing around it. All right? Yeah, I learned that the hard way a couple of times. Ah, oh, damn. Right? It just comes up. Okay. Or worse, you break one of the strands or more than one strand and mm, on high current devices, that's not a good plan, right? I mean, this radio is only, well, it's rated for 15, uh, worst case is 13.9, but my 7000 is 22 amps. I'm not screwing with that, okay? And I would use something like, well, it's not going to be this one because this is a hex. This is a 2 by 3 connector. But very often you use something that's already pre-done, right? You're just going to put the power poles on the end of it. You got the whole cable. Well, at home, I use a really big version of this, really big version of this. It's got a Group 27 battery in it. And actually, as of tomorrow, it's going to have a lithium ion phosphate in it. But on that one, I do this. You see a fuse there? No fuse. Where's the fuse? In the panel. Okay? And the other half is this. Power poles to, in this case, the quad, the 2x2. Two two. So I worry about it working? No. It plugs in. I make the cable only as long as I need it for my, uh, for my desk, and it plugs in. So if I have move things around, I make a new one of these. That's it. 
Okay, so let's take a look at some of the versatility here. Here's that. This is a Yezu. This one's an FT1D. Most of the Yezus use the same connector. That's kind of re one of the reasons I actually use Yezus. Plug it into the side. Plug it into a source. And let's pick a source. Let's take this one. Plug it in here. And what does that say? Charge it. Thank you. All right. So I have a bigger version of this in my shack. Right? It's a battery in a container with a distribution panel. The newer ones, especially the ones with the lithium iron phosphate, use something like this. This is a West Mountain Epic Power Gate. And what it does, it's, its claim to fame is, A, it's programmable. You choose the technology, the chemistry, AGM, lead acid, lithium iron phosphate, and it tells it how to charge the battery. This one is currently programmed through a USB port for lithium iron phosphate. So I can plug that power supply into this. I can plug any of the lithium iron phosphate batteries into this, and I can plug a load into this and not worry about it. I can also plug in a solar panel. All right? There's a ton of these things out there. While I don't necessarily endorse a product, this one works for me. Okay, so... I own a camper. That camper is 12 volts. And it's a mobile EOC. Both of us have used it on numerous occasions. And everything I use is centered on 12 volts. Here is a Maha charger with the AC adapter. It's actually 12 volts. So... Power poles from here. And it lights right up. All right, so I have one of these in my camper. Okay? So four double A's, four triple A's, some combination of the above. Okay? It works really well. All right, so let's go a little further. I just probably recognize this. This is just an example. This is a wireless access point. This one happens to be 12 volts. And there it lights up. Okay. Some of them, like that are five volts. Some of them are 5 volts. And I don't have... Do I have my adapter? They light up this morning. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I do have my computer back. We can go through the slides to show them what the slides are. All right. So, there's that. All right. So... This is Steve's phone. Where's the wire? It's your white wire. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. So. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> I do need my glasses for that. All right. So here's a little gizmo that converts... 12 volts to 5.2. All right. Naturally, it's got power poles on one side. You guys really should see my camper, but it gets too dark too soon these days. And you'll see it later in the future. All right. So I'm back in business and he should be charging. Right. There's a ton of flexibility. So anything I can do here that, I, that required an AC circuit... I can use DC for, especially this little gizmo. Anybody recognize these? I'll put it up like this. So you can see it. Anybody know what this is? It's a cradle point. You know what a cradle point is? Okay. Think of this on mega steroids. This is a wireless access point for cell towers. So this little critter sits normally either in my Jeep 
or in my camper. I've converted it to power poles. It is 12 volts. So it gives me access to the cell towers for internet. I can run simultaneously three streams of Netflix. This is an example because it's 10 megabits. And actually, because it's a wireless access point as well as a wired one, you'll be able to see it on your phones. Is there a cell tower nearby? Okay. Pretty sure you have the password. So I've taken this cross country, plugged into 12 volts power poles, because that's what I use here, and it just never fails me. We're going to deviate a little bit, if I can find the wire. Yeah. And you just talked about, is it essentially a um, order? You just talk to the cell tower and then it puts it on one line? It is a wireless access point that instead of being cabled to your internet provider, is tethered to the cell towers. This one's Verizon specifically. Okay. Uh, the manufacturer is a cradle point. This one's one of the lower end ones. I didn't need anything special. My wife wanted to be able to, in fact, we plug a, an IP phone into it. My wife can call me wherever. Um, there's actually a phone in the uh, camper. A cordless, of course. <laughs> okay. So let's depart a little bit from power. Um, is this the right one? This is the right one. I'm going to find it again. Oops, there's Mr. Mouse. Let's see Mr. Mouse. Okay, so how many of you do QRP? How many of you do QRP? Okay. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> okay. So when you have an antenna, it's just a wire, and you want to extend it, you want to go from one band to another, let's say 40 meters, because I'm going to use 40 meters for example. What's a four in the color code? There's a yellow on the end of this wire. Okay, so what I would do is I would either make this the counterpoise or maybe the antenna. This is, I'm not going to do 40, 40 meters here, but, or even 20, right, for half, right? But this is not complete. And here's why. So when we do the red and black, it's red on right as it points to you. I'm holding it. It's pointing to you. It's red on right. Sticking its tongue out to you. Oh, by the way. All right. And well, I'll show you a, a good way to get around that. So this is going to be yellow on right. And the reason I'm going to do this and my other piece of wire is also going to be um, two of them, but it'll probably be a black and a black connected to the radio. The reason I do that is so I can interconnect the wires with the clip. So let's say I have a little stub off the radio, which I didn't bring, a little stub off the radio that's actually my antenna, right? And here's the wire. So if I'm doing 40, it's the yellow, right? 
and it's always four zero. Okay, if I do uh, 20, so that would be black, brown, red, it would be red, black. Be careful with red, black, okay? Because you don't want it to be power. Your wire is going to be really thin. You're probably not going to worry about it. And it's going to be in your antenna enclosure. But that's what you would do, all right? It's extremely versatile. You don't have to use it for 12 volts. I mean, clearly, we can use it. What the hell is it? For 24 volts or any other combination. Just be consistent. Again, well, if it's the counterpoise, do you really care? Yeah. Is the regular antenna? Maybe. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So if you're going to, I mean, let's say you've got, I'm going to make this work. Let's say you've got a 40 and a 20. You're going to put them together for a 60 meter band. You're done. Put the clip on it, be done with it. Right? You don't carry a 60 meter. You carry a 20 and a 40. Maybe a 10. Right? Build the combination. You can tell what it is by looking at the damn connectors. All over the place. I got them here. <laughs> Go to Anderson. They'll tell you where, who to buy it from. Yeah, and, and HRO sells them for that matter, and so does uh, DX Engineering. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we've been, I've been showing you this orientation, kind of a left to right orientation. Is that the only way you're going to use them? It doesn't have to be. Here's an example of them stacked. These happen to be gray, but they're stacked one on top of the other. It doesn't care. It's whatever the application requires. Right? Okay. Well, here's another one. Here's four. And they're all different colors. All right? So I've got the black and the red. That's the 12 volt. It's also an orange and a blue. Why orange and blue? Well, that turns out to be the colors of the wires that come out of the cradle point. Those are data cables. <coughs> so I just matched it. Make use of it. I don't use the data cable, but now I don't have two pieces of wire just dangling or I have to cut them off. They're there, and I actually use it for spacing purposes. Okay? Now, there's a ton of different options and connections and conversions, and here's one that goes power pole to the quad. Here's power pole to an OEMT. I mean, use what you need. I don't build against these, the OEMTs, because I never get them right. <laughs> They're always loose. They suck, so I buy them. It's the only one I do buy. The others I build. Um, so here's a hex. Here's another hex. And quad. And here's a conversion from a... This one converts from a hex to a quad. So I can pretty much plug and play when we go to field day. Somebody's always got a bad cable, right? It's the law. It's either bad cable or a bad wire, right, for the antennas? I don't care. I have that bag. I'm in business. We had one guy who refused to use uh, power poles. He drove us all crazy because he ran this massive, loud, obnoxious generator. We grabbed one of the lithium iron phosphates, put it down, took his wire, cut it, <laughs> put power poles on both of them, put them back together again. Here, here's your wire for when you want it. Here's the wire for when we want it. Shut them right up. That was real. Um, he's like, wow, this, this sucks pretty nice. <laughs> you don't think? Yeah. Um, so here's another block. There's a block that 
you know, this is a, these are all parallel wired. So you can plug a power source into it. And then you've got, in this case, three loads. You can do up to seven loads for some of these things. Well, here's a case where you got a 75. <clears throat> you don't need the pins for this one, trust me. Um, to the 45s or 30 or 50. No fuses here. The fuses would be in the cables you're going to use. Okay? Because sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes this is all you have, so this is what you use. Sometimes you have the, the luxury of one of these. Or something to its, you know, similar to it. You can get them in a variety of sizes and, and loads. My camper runs an 80 amp. It's two 40s that are split. There's 40 internal and 40 external. Um, here's a case where this is a lithium iron phosphate for my KX3. Here's the charger. I just cut the wire, put power poles on it, right? Now it's power poles. I still have the original functionality because I put power poles on both seats, both sections, right? But now because of something like where is it? I just had it. Something like this, I can plug this in and charge it directly. I don't need this. Think about all the flexibility this little technology has. And I can mix and match pretty much whatever I need. And I have, and most of this stuff does work in my camp. All right, so here's something else. Um, there is a voltage controller inside here. Oh my God, that's heavy. These lead acid batteries suck. Or AGMs. So here's a voltage controller, right? And what it does is it takes a source, uh, the power supply, or the 12 volt battery, and it powers this radio. Well, let's say the battery is a little bit weak and I don't have availability of AC source. I need a new plan. And here it might be. All I need is to charge that thing. I just don't need to run off of it. Here's a cigarette lighter. Here's a power pole. Plug it into the voltage control, let it charge the battery. I'm driving along, battery's being charged. You know, your imagination can take you anywhere. Trust me, this I've used. I do the Proudy. When we do the Prouty and we use someone else's vehicle, this is what we rely on because we never rely on these batteries to, to last. I have them in the back of the Jeep and the back of the Prius. The MX-5, I don't put radios in. So, yeah. And the Jeep, um, in the Jeep, there's a version of this. This is, this one comes out like this. The one in the Jeep comes down like this. It's what fits better. I have one of these actually on my Prius. Uh, it doesn't, I can't remember if it has the USB. I don't use the USB because they only have a, like an amp. You can only do a, deliver an amp. Now you can't do anything with an amp. Um, hell, you can't even run the Raspberry Pi that's in my camper. That's two and a half amps. But yes, I do use them. You know, we were... My wife and I were going to... to a reunion... Um, she went to Berlin American High School. And so they have reunions all over the world. And one of the reunions was in Rhode Island, and I wanted to take my camera, but I forgot to charge the battery. One of these power poles into one of those adapters, and that camera was charged by the time I got there. She was very happy. All right? Use your imagination. I mean, most people look at this and they say, okay, I've got a battery and I've got a load and I plug it in, that's the end of it. There's so much more you can do with this. Right? Questions? Yeah, what's the story? Um, an Apache Labs, an AM7000, for some reason, they're right on the client part. So they should be the regular cable. Mm -hmm. That has one side is 
I have no idea. I have no idea. I've never heard, never heard that. No, the children of Sumblers haven't heard their comments yet. Yeah. 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 Not too many, fortunately. <laughs> Yes, except in a Prius. Except in a Prius. Why? Why does it not HF? Why does HF not work in a Prius? There's a data bus that's always on in the Prius. It's really high speed. It's RF noisy as hell. <laughs> and they get away with it. Hybrids, same problem. What's the, you have a HF radio? Yeah. No. Some radios get by it. My 7,000 will, not much else. <laughs> I'm like, so what we did was we took, um, I have a, an inverter, a kilowatt pure sine wave inverter. And I plugged it in this thing, and it ran great. The radios were running great. I have this little camper that you can tell it's a whole 4 by 6 camper for my motorcycle, but it works great on the Prius too, right? And we're having a grand little time, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the car started. The car started to charge the battery, and I lost all of it. A few minutes later, the engine stopped, battery was charged, everything came back. I went from an S two or three to an S5000 <laughs> for, for the number of minutes it took to charge the battery. They all have this high-speed data bus on it, and it's just obnoxious. Most hybrids have it. I don't know what a Tesla's like, but it's probably worse. Okay? Yeah. So, it's not perfect. So the idea was that people could read the rate out of the Yes. That's why it's the Aries standard. That's nationwide. It's the Aries standard for interconnectability. Right? So, probably, yes. We, I mean, we've had more than a few failures. <laughs> and when we do use power poles, excuse me, when we're smart enough to use power poles, we simply pull the affected component out and put a new one in. It doesn't have to be exact. It just has to do the same job, right? <laughs> Clearly, these are not the same, but I can make them look the same, right? Um, the difference here is, let's see, that's, that's probably what, five or six amps maybe? So this is a 12 volt 20 amp. Let's say it lasts five or six hours. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. If I wanted to lug it around. Here's a 12 volt 20 amp. It's going to last at least twice that long. And it's a third of Well, they're up roughly three to one. And it's not quite that anymore, but yeah, roughly. And I would much rather use this. The downside to this one is this voltage control is not, it's stupid. It only knows about lead acid or AGN. It's not programming. It's all it can handle. Okay, it's hundred dollars at the time. I don't care. Uh, where's the little beast? This thing's almost two hundred dollars. To me, it's worth it. I have six of these things. All right, um, that's worth it to me. 
Because I can go in there, I can either use the jumpers, which I can't stand because you have to open the stupid thing up, or plug a USB cable in there, micro USB, micro USB, uh, and use this laptop, and I can show you. Actually, I should show you guys that. Oh, I should do that. I should show you that. Um, and I can say, okay, I want this battery chemistry. Oh, take the defaults? Sure. All right. No, I want to modify this. I want to modify that. Right? That's the beauty of this. And it's firmware upgradable from that same, that very same USB cable. I love this thing. It's a lot less weight than this is. It's extremely smart. And it has a solar panel input. That does not. This will handle 30 volts of solar. Right? Was it worth it? Oh, absolutely. It's got four mounting holes for it. But anyway. Hell, you, I use, uh, ooh, none of these have it. Most of you have easy passes, right? That little adhesive, that, that thing that's on there, that's called dual lock. That's 3M's dual lock product. All right, there's 100 hooks per inch, uh, 200 hooks per inch, doesn't melt in the sun, 400 hooks per inch. All right, what you're using on your windshield is 100 hooks per square inch. Okay? I typically will use that on these sometimes so that they don't move around in one of those cases because they could destroy everything that's in that case if they move. So put it on here, right? Use it one place, peel it off, use it someplace else. Don't use the 400 per square inch. 3M will tell you you'll break your thumbs trying to pull it apart. <laughs> it says you have to use a crowbar. I use the 100 and the 200. What else? I think we've pretty much killed that. Question? Yeah. Yes, there is a standard. Let me show you. And the best way to do it, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, when I would, when I worked at HRO, I would take the bags that people would buy, and I would take one pair out, and I would put it together the right way. I'd say, when you're down to this, go buy a new bag. This is what you use as your model. All right, I have a better model. Any one of the pre-manufactured cables is right. Yeah. I Right. It was easier to fix it, split it apart, and split it back. Okay, so this one's wrong. This one's also wrong. Is it? And this one's right. Correct. Okay, so, right, if you're holding it this way, good grief. Oh my god, are they welded? They might be welded. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> if these are solder, you got real big problems. <laughs> All right, so what you want, see how that thing's sticking its tongue out at you? I'm holding it. It's sticking its tongue out at you. Red on right to me. All right. So you're looking at it, it's red on right. When it's, I'm holding it, it's sticking its tongue out at you. Red on right. Okay? This is not, this is. Okay? So the best thing to do is to take a set. Let's do it for you right now. So you have it for the future. You should probably label this, but. Okay, so there's red. There's black. That's your standard. Red on right. As it sticks its tongue out to him or to the camera. Okay. All right. So you can make this permanent. You could put one of those pins in it. Actually, we have extra pins. We could do that. Right? So put a pin in it. No, no, no. Not these. They're black pins. They keep that together. All right? So that would be your template from now on. And that's what I used to do. Every time someone would buy something, they said, well, I don't know what's this and which. I was like, okay, here. Hand it to them. Don't use it. Don't ever use it. Works great, right? Now they always have a template. Make sense? Okay. 
Any more questions?